I'm Jeff Yarger. I'm a professor of chemistry, biochemistry, and physics at Arizona State University. I'm making a short lecture today uh, to introduce the general concept of mixing. And we're going to do this showing it in an ideal gas case. Um, and this concept, but we're oftentimes having to mix multiple components in thermodynamics of either biological or chemical systems. And often taking a very simple example will help us um, understand how this generally applies uh, to systems. So um, it's not, uh, we're, we're gonna talk about this generally and then we will see numerous examples later on where we'll work very specific problems where we mix gases or liquids or things together and look at how their thermodynamics or energies change in a system. So we wanna motivate this by looking at something uh, fairly simple. So we just have a gas A uh, on one side and a gas B on the other side. Two different gases, say, you know, nitrogen gas and, and um, you know, nitrogen gas and, uh, and oxygen gas, for example. Um, and we have them separated and separated in such a way that they're physically separated with a stopcock at the moment. And then, um, you know, we open the valve and these two gases don't react but they do mix, right? So at one point, all the nitrogen was on one side, all the oxygen was on another, and then we're gonna wait, you know, some time till these, you know, uh, uh, change it and, and are now thoroughly mixed where there's nitrogen, you know, and oxygen on both sides. Right? And so if this starts with a certain pressure, uh, and this starts with a certain pressure, right? Then we'll have overall, it'll combine or it'll, it'll e equilibrate between the two and you'll have the partial pressures of each of the components. And so let's look at it from, um, you know, looking at it from say, you know, a function of its energy. And specifically in this case, let's look at its, you know, Gibbs free energy, and, and then we'll make a relationship to how the entropy uh, changes of the system too. And what we mean by, you know, the, um, the Gibbs free energy of mixing, say that the change uh, in free energy that we'll call the mixing of it is starting with this, where this would be, you know, the pure, each of the pure components, and this would be, you know, the final mixed component here. And we would generally look at that and say that, you know, this is the number of moles of A times it's the chemical potential of A, you know, plus, you know, the number of moles of B and its chemical potential of B, right? And we would say the same thing, so we'll distinguish this as one. Um, we, would, we would say the exact same thing for this one. We would say that this is you know, the number of moles of A times its chemical potential for this second system here, two, times the number of moles of B in its chemical potential. And your naive thought, writing it in this fashion, is, is that they would be the same, so the overall change in energy would be zero. And so that's, you know, intuitively what a lot of times comes to mind in this situation. And so let's see if this is uh, true or not in this type of case. So now writing out that these number of moles of A times its chemical potential of A and number of moles of B and its chemical potential of B for each the pure and the mixed state, I've written them out here where now I've substituted the chemical potential for going, starting at an ideal state at one bar and going to whatever pressure we were at, right? And so uh, for an ideal gas, you would write that, you know, as I have here. And you would do the same, you know, for the B component. Where our standard state is, you know, one atmosphere. And we're, you know, uh, basically STP, we'll say, in this. Um, so now we would write the same expression, you know, for... Um, uh, as we said, for the mixed state, you know, that's expressing 
each one of these individually, except now it's mixed. So now it's not the total pressure, the total pressure of each of those individual ones, it's the partial pressure of each one still to the same standard, right? To the same standard state here and here, right? So now we can take these two terms and that we said the delta G of mixing is just this one minus this one, right? So that's how we define our delta G of mixing. And if you do this because of this, you'll see that you, know, you get this expression out where it's now, it's the partial pressure over you know, the total pressure of each one of those. And because you know, the partial pressures, we can put this in terms of mole fraction of A and B, right? So I've done that here, the mole fraction is, is, is the fraction of the partial pressure of one over the total, right? So, um, which is basically as we've defined here. So you can see the delta G of mixing um, isn't zero. Um, you know, it, it depends, you know, this case on, you know, uh, the mole fractions of these components, right? And conversely, because we know that this is, you know, minus T delta S, right, or, or, or TDS, right, this gives us a relationship to the entropy mixing, which is actually the way most of the time we derive this from the second law, that you get a maximum in the entropy of mixing, right, as this gets towards a 50-50 mixture, and it minimizes, you know, the free energy of that system. So I hope this gives you a brief overview of how we start looking at these mixing things and set it up, you know, simply for an ideal system because this comes about a lot when we're mixing not just ideal gases, but when we're mixing gases, liquids, when we mix a lot of things, these type of concepts that, that there, there's actually an energy associated with mixing because there's an entropy or a disorder uh, and a direction to this that you can start in this case and when you open the valve it goes here but you never you know close the valve here all of a sudden open it and see it spontaneously go back this direction. These are some of the fundamental concepts that give us the second law, the arrow of time, etc. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you.